Hello everybody, this is the FaceTime video. Today it's a video where I introduce you the changes and up actually updates that I've done to my huge sheet. Uh, the sheet is called Historical Returns since 1872 of Stocks, Gold, uh, Permanent Portfolio, Interest Rates and Inflation. Um, and I have um, copied, originally I have copied this sheet from Mark Demezel and he also inspired me to update it because he has updated uh, his sheet himself a few, few days ago um, and I just thought it would be cool even though the year 2023 is not yet done and December can be uh, somewhat volatile still so there can be some still changes that can happen but it's reasonably close to the end of the year so we can start like gathering the information and just uh, um, uh, we can just uh, have a look at how everything looks on the macro perspective and now the two changes um, I have actually constructed this sheet like in 2021 so it was like two years ago and the, the two big changes that I have made to my sheet comparing to the Mark's sheet is that I have extended mine all the way to uh, 1800 so uh, even the first uh, the first stock information, the first stock values that I could find was back to 1800, it dates all the way back to 1800 and that's also where I started counting uh, um, the, uh, the values so I would have even longer timeline of you know everything uh, and also another, uh, um, th uh, another information I have added these columns here and uh, so that also is added to the chart because I think that the global GDP uh, can be a meaningful uh, information that is affecting um, the stock performance uh, and we're talking about the world index stock performance now um, yeah I'm going to also supply to you the link for this sheet so you can have it you can have a look at it yourself you can judge whether uh, I've made mistakes in the calculations or just uh, uh, if I have incorrect values somewhere, just write me in the comments if you find something like that. Uh, I know it can get uh, pretty confusing with the stocks because obviously the stock index that I'm now using, which is the um, MSCI, um, uh, it I think I've been using it since uh, 1870, but before that I was using the S&P 500 and before the S&P 500, now because I haven't been doing this, uh, this the latest values in the uh, 19th century, I haven't been adding them right now. So I honestly I forgot. Uh, but uh, whether I used Dew Jones or well, but I used the oldest index that I remember very clearly. Um, and now I would have to check if that's Dew Jones indeed, or if there is even older uh, index than that. Now let's go to the uh, my findings and also my evaluation. So first of all, when, when Mark was uh, updating his uh, chart, he pointed that um, uh, we are not yet that low with gold and that we also are um, reasonably not or probably not that high with the stocks. So um, Okay, so here is what I have found out. So again, just before I start, this uh, blue line, this dark blue, is the stocks uh, valuations uh, with, with, inflations, with inflation. And by inflation, I mean uh, I actually decrease the value of the stocks uh, whenever more money is added into the circulation it's all done with these columns here so I you know look at the as the assets Fed reserve in in, uh, in US million and whenever they increase the money supply by that amount I kind of decrease the uh, valuation of the stocks it's probably purchasing power it's not an inflation but it's still to me I think it's very important to also look at how this chart uh, look like when you discount the increase in the money supply in the circulation right so um, the the stocks themselves when you just account for the valuations as they stand in my opinion in 2021 went fairly high 
Also, what I've noticed that this um, this cycle from the the bottom to top, the the bottom was actually in 2008. Well, obviously, uh, it was 15, well, 13 years, right? But we've also had um, fairly short um, cycles, quote unquote, in the past as well. Uh, this cycle was before the Great Depression, and I'm gonna talk about it in a, in a second because more findings that I found out. So the 13 years, like the length of the cycle does not convince me that we should be going up. I think this was fairly long enough so far and uh, that uh, the length itself uh, does not tell me that we should go, um, we should continue in the bull market. However, uh, what does uh, tell me that there is indeed uh, the end we could be not yet done with the macro bull market, like macro bull market meaning counting from the low either in 2002 or 2008, I believe 2008 just retested the 2002 low, but okay, let's count from 2008. So we could actually still have uh, some years forward of the bull market where the stocks are just, uh, you know, more, more valued and at least on this chart, which is this, uh, uh, which is this light, uh, light blue chart, and that's the stocks, the stock valuation minus the increase in the money supply. Okay, that's actually this this line here. And um, shockingly, actually, because there was quite dramatic money supply in 2008, and I believe the, the, the increase in the money supply continued in 2009, which was, yes, <laughs> it continued in 2009. That was when extreme amount of the uh, money was printed and added to the uh, circulation. So this chart p uh, uh, bottomed later than the uh, normal stocks that we can see if you have a we look at the, the stocks we see 2008 and that where we see is the bottom but when you discount the increase in the money supply it's actually 2016 where this bottomed so that leads me to a possible conclusion here that it they're going to pick out in a different time as well and so that's why this dark, this this dark blue, the normal stocks uh, without a discount of the increase in the money supply, they peaked in 2021, and I think that could be the top. Don't get me wrong, I think that could be the top. But also, this is an average. I count with an average of uh, the past 10 years average and year-to-year -year increase. Okay, that's the 14% on average in 2021. You can see it in these blue columns here, and uh, the 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 number is is here. It's actually 14%, right? It's actually 14% here. So that I think could be the top. However, it doesn't mean it's the top of the value of the stocks. I think this was the top in the year to year. Uh, a 10 years average stocks uh, valuating. <laughs> I know it's, it sounds complicated, but not the, the valuation top of the stocks. And the reason why I also say that, another reason, is that uh, over the past 100, 100 years, you can check this chart, guys. You can, you can see, you can discover that like this chart peaked in, in, in 1959. But when you look at the real actual valuation of the S&P 500 or the stocks, you are going to discover that the stock still kept going uh, up for like 8 to 10 years. Or this, the last cycle also shows it very clearly. This chart peaked in 1989. But we all know that the dot-com bubble was 2000. Okay, right? So... Uh, it was 10, more than 10 years of the stock still going up, even though this chart is going down. It's because the growth of the stocks was accelerating. I hope it makes sense. I'm trying my best to, to, to pass it on clearly and simply to you. Um, so I think it peaked here, but I think 
this uh, this uh, light blue the stocks minus the the amount of of money in the circulation uh, I think that is going to peak later so I think we are dealing with some kind of an anomaly here because it hasn't happened in the past but also never in the past this this uh, chart this this line peaked uh, or bottomed on a different year than this blue like every time this this dark blue uh, bottomed also this uh, uh, light blue bottomed okay this is the first time and i just think that's because it's it's really nearing the end of the fiat uh, money supply uh, 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 just the fiat economy that's what i think actually and i think that the the, the the society is really due to progress into the hopefully better a form of the uh, money of you know and the best would be definitely the centralized the centralized uh, money that would be uh, most likely electronically based but also they have to have some kind of a physical form as well obviously they can't be just electronic and also they have to be uh, they have to be proof, uh, they have to be positioned to withstand the internet internet collapse. So we just can't have just an electronic, you know, crypto uh, uh, money that, that is all dependent upon the, you know, uh, working of the internet. So we need to have also some kind of... Um, uh, there is this is this is the evolution like i believe we will get there i believe we are going to do it, get there i believe that the crypto is evolving to get there so it's just all i'm saying is that i don't think that the crypto as it stands today i don't think are ready to take but i think it's coming there i think it's coming there and i do believe and i'm a great fan of the decentralized blockchains obviously so I do, it's my biggest hope and my biggest belief that the next, um, then the next um, uh, finance system of this planet is going to be the centralized uh, finance. The centralized finance and, and that's it, that's about it. So uh, another thing that I want to talk to you about is the gold. Oh, that's also what Mark mentioned. Uh, the mo the uh, Mark mentioned that um, he he thinks that the gold didn't drop low enough on this chart, and I'm also like not completely convinced uh, with that because um, because yet again um, I don't want to be counting on on going as low as as in the past or maybe yeah actually yeah this is this is what I think. Um, just about the gold and about the communities. I'm going to now show you uh, the video. Uh, just after this slide, I'm going to switch. But um, what I think is coming is a quantum technology because there is already talk about it. The quantum technology that's going to sample every square meter on the planet. Uh, because every square meter of the planet apparently has a unique electromagnetic signature and we can measure these signatures we can make a planet that also would uh, uh, also would make the GPS work without the uh, satellites measure the signatures that in which we are of, at the moment and evaluating that okay what's the coordinates that this device that is measuring it is now at at but the biggest thing here is that this this tech is very likely to discover because uh, based on what's beneath us whether they're caves whether they're also hollow spaces or whether they're deposits of uh, the commodities like gold the electromagnetic um, uh, signature of that square meter is different. So uh, there is also talk about this already. I'm not sure how close is this this tech, but uh, once this tech comes online, tremendous amount of deposits of the commodities like gold and silver will be found. And I think, I also think, 
I believe it's not that far away and that it could be and also the, the market is going to front run this. So if there is an information of like official information confirmation that this tech is coming in three, ye uh, three years, you know, the gold will plummet immediately because the market will. So if once we have an announcement that in five years from now, we're going to get, we're going to discover quantum or, or a tremendous amount, tremendous deposits of gold. That moment, we have five years of a constant gold dumping. And I'm going to also look at the chart of the gold. But before I do, I just would like to conclude this, this chart and my findings here. So yes, yet 2023. And this, uh, I think that the stocks in the US dollar value, uh, in the pure US dollar value on this chart, I th the year to year, 10 year average increase of the stocks peaked. I think that uh, we will not get more than 14% uh, on this chart. But at the same time, I think there are reasonable arguments that still five to 10 years even, uh, we still are going to have stocks getting uh, higher on value, more and more valued. And also this, yeah, the, uh, the, the um, uh, light blue line, which is the value of stocks minus value in dollars, but minus the increase of the dollar money supply, that is, I think, still gonna go up over the next five to 10 years or that how it looks like to me. And also what also this tells me what I can derive that uh, I also might be right with my uh, um, uh, prediction or call that the US dollar is indeed ending as the world's reserve currency, but not just US dollar, but all the fiat currencies. So um, there is going to be a new um, and that I think this decade guys, I think we are going to have a new um, a new uh, finance system even this decade and it that is that close <laughs> and yeah like like uh, uh, there's quite some stuff that you can actually uh, derive hypothetically from from a chart like this so again thanks to mark for making the fundamental of it and also uh, I have uh, also extended it, but you know, in 1800 from in 19th century, the, the you know, two centuries ago, uh, it, the, you, there is not much that you can read because all the stocks were fairly like new. It was first like very, very sideways. And then the first uh, one in actually, and uh, in the first uh, world war, this line went, went really, really, really down. Uh, which is which is really interesting actually to me, um, but anyway, I'm not here to to to, di to dive into this. Yeah, and also I wanted to mention just the Great Depression that we are right now in kind of a war times because it's it's obvious that Ukraine is the kind of a uh, a point of conflict between the West and the Russia, so we are kind of in a war times, but. As a difference between the second world war, between the last uh, world war and this one, is that it actually erupted, it officially erupted in 1939 when uh, Hitler, uh, when he uh, invaded Poland, but it was after the Great Depression, right? And people were just struggling. People were completely, people had no food. And so people were so hopeless that they were willing to die in the battles or even to harm other people, kill them just because they had nothing to lose. Do you think we have nothing to lose, guys? Do you think that we are past some dramatic, like the past 10 years was like everybody is just doing really well, I think. And it's still, I think, the case. Uh, and also this year was also pretty good, actually. You know, lots of jobs, low unemployment. I see job offers everywhere. 
to to all kind of fields you know anybody who wants to work and free to work and uh, uh, and that's it I don't think and people don't will not want in this environment nobody wants the war there is political game of course that creates this kind of conflicts like Ukraine war like the Israeli war right now there is political game but the people don't want that they're not gonna go and fight some maybe will who are Unre well, some will, but uh, generally the pos the situation. I don't think we are positioned to to start a third world war anytime this decade. I think we can only be positioned for it after like five years of a real struggle, real struggle. And uh, the of course it's getting dangerous. The the conflict also the Ukraine, you know, Russia, you know modern nuclear arsenal and stuff like that you know Iran's possible involvement with with Israel it's all dangerous but I think all of this is gonna be solved uh, with political changes I expect turbulent political changes in both in the West and in the East this decade and also finally I just would like to show you that if you want to uh, uh, have some kind of uh, insight about some of these quantum technologies that I also mentioned, uh, uh, I think a pretty reasonable, good video to watch is the technology uh, big, bigger than AI with uh, Jack Hydry. It's on Peter H. Diamonds, uh, it's episode 68. And this is the last but not least that I want to show you, it's the gold, because I think we've, we've uh, made a new all-time height for gold, and I think that's the top. I think that's the top, guys. I think that it's just a matter of time before the announcement of, of this new tech that is going to discover so many new deposits for gold. And now the bulls are kind of in control. So like if ever was there to that the time to short the gold. And also does this look like a bear market for gold? And like it, the gold did not really have a bear market. Like, look at the bear market from 1980 to 2000. Just look at this. Just look at this chart here and compare it with the, this twin kind of twin top. This is not, I think, the, the gold of the, the bear market of the gold. And I think that's coming and I think that's starting. And so that would conclude this video. Thank you very much. I hope to make you a new FaceTime video, even though I admit that my, my, in my uh, last FaceTime video where I was bearish, for crypto, I was a little too early to make it.